So um, I'm Rosemary Lang, for those of you who haven't met me before. There's quite a few young people in the audience. So uh, I've really enjoyed the day. Um, thanks again to Leon and Tom. I'm sure Tom contributed lots to organising, even though he says he didn't really. And it's been lovely to see so many old friends and colleagues, many of whom I've spent time with before. And people have come from far and wide, obviously, and that's a great tribute to Mike and a great um, delight of the day. Um, I think we've had a very good combination of old talk, not sorry, not old, um, <laughs> 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 old talk, <laughs> summaries of Mike's work, and as well as some really cutting edge new things, including a soup and a lot of equations um, <laughs> and some wonderful, wonderful dung beetles and uh, some stuff that I absolutely didn't understand. Um, I was once going to be a physicist who enjoyed optics, but this is all completely beyond me. And then I became a psychologist, which is quite interesting. Um, I think had Mike been here, he would have really enjoyed it. Uh, I think he would have appreciated the new stuff and the old stuff. And I think he would have engaged with a lot of questions with everybody. Um, I'm probably going to get upset now, but I'm trying not to. Uh, one thing that's been commented on several times is that he was very open-minded in his science and basically curiosity-driven um, and just looked at things with fresh eyes and had a lot of fun. Fun's been a word that's been used a lot. Um, so I'm just going to read something that he wrote, which is in his autobiography, which um, I don't know what it was written for. Uh, I think it's probably the Royal Society, but... Um, it's at the end of his autobiography when he's, talk, he's talking about working with eye movements and he's become, um, out, you know, had quite a lot of interaction with theoretical psychologists uh, who don't come out very well in this. <laughs> <laughs> so, excuse that, I'm sorry for the bad press for them. So, he's talking about the eye movement system with device. He says, so far we've used the system to study driving, playing ball games, and sight reading music. Our ethological colleagues would like to take it to a disco to start studying mate choice, but so far we have resisted this. The questions and interests revolve around the way we sample the world, given that our region on acute vision is only about one degree across. Where do we need to look to get the information? We need to do things. Answers are emerging, but we get into trouble with some of our psychologist colleagues. But this is only curiosity driven, they say. Where are the hypotheses? The trouble with hypothesis driven science is that you never get to make a discovery, and that's the real buzz. Mm. 